Arthur Morgan is the main protagonist of Red Dead Redemption 2. A large, strong, muscular and mentally capable man, he functions as the Vandalin Gang's main enforcer. Being a man of incredible versatility, his brawling, riding and shooting skills are all unmatched. Simply put, if you found yourself in the crosshairs of Arthur Morgan, you'd be in serious trouble. Combined with his charisma and intelligence, and overall loyalty to the Vandalin Gang, nothing was impossible to him. By 1899, Arthur Morgan had amassed a reputation, both within his gang and outside of it, for being both proficient and ferocious, and also unwaveringly loyal to Dutch Vandalin. In today's video we're going to be exploring the origins of Arthur Morgan, not dissimilarly to my last video about Dutch Vandalin, and I think this intro has been long enough, so please enjoy. Arthur was born in the northern United States in 1863 to Lyle and Beatrice Morgan. For unknown reasons, Beatrice passed away when Arthur was a child, leaving him in the care of his outlaw father. Lyle Morgan was a petty criminal, and it's implied he would beat the young Arthur. In 1874, when Arthur was 11 years old, Lyle was arrested for larceny, and soon after, Arthur would witness his death. How this happened is never clarified, however, Arthur himself states that it couldn't happen soon enough. Despite this, Arthur would keep his father's hat and a photo of his mugshot. After spending some time as a street orphan, Arthur was found around the year 1877 by Dutch Vanderlind and Hosea Matthews. The two would take Arthur into their care and he would begin to view them as surrogate father figures. They taught him how to read, write, hunt, shoot, fight, all skills that Arthur Morgan would later master, and Dutch would introduce Arthur to his vision for a better, more free future, free of the constraints of governments and society, and to a certain degree Arthur would come to share these anarchistic views. All in all, Arthur Morgan was the first protégé of Dutch van der Linde and Hosea Matthews. Soon after, Arthur had found a pet dog named Copper, whom he grew incredibly close with, occasionally even taking baths with the dog. Arthur had difficulty controlling the animal, however, though this seemed to only deepen his love for Copper. At some point later, Copper would pass away and Arthur would keep a photo of him by his bed. He also became fond of his horse, whom he'd named Bodicea, that became his signature mount up until her death, prior to the events of Red Dead Redemption 2. During the early years of Arthur's adulthood, he also met a young woman named Mary Gillis. The two fell in love and became engaged. Arthur would teach Mary's younger brother Jamie how to ride a horse, however Mary's father disapproved of Arthur due to his life of crime. This caused the relationship to fall apart, the couple separated and Mary would find a different suitor a man known as Mr. Linton, who would later pass away prior to the events of Red Dead Redemption 2 from an illness. In 1884, the gang sent Arthur out fishing, returning with three fish. The gang celebrated and had a big feast. Soon after, Arthur and Dutch were walking in the local market, where it was discovered that he had purchased the bass from a fishmonger in the town, which I suppose was a touch embarrassing for Arthur, but there you go. The following year, Dutch brought a 12-year-old orphan named John Marston into the gang whom he'd saved from being lynched by a group of Illinois homesteaders. Arthur and John developed a brotherly bond, and John would become Dutch and Hosea's next protege. Over the years that followed, Arthur and John would be regarded as Dutch's favourite sons. In the year 1887, Arthur would participate in the Vandalin gang's first major bank robbery. At 2pm, Dutch, Hosea and Arthur burst into the banking house of Leon Hoyt and made off with $5,000 worth of gold. Rumour has it that after the robbery, the trio lingered in the town, visiting hovels, shanties and orphanages, handing out portions of their take to the poor and needy. This is the event that would lead to Arthur initially becoming a wanted man. Sometime later, Arthur would meet and sleep with a 19-year-old waitress named Eliza. As a result, Eliza became pregnant and would later give birth to her baby boy named Isaac. Eliza knew what kind of life Arthur led, however she accepted any support that Arthur could offer. Arthur did not want to promise anything he couldn't keep, however he did say he'd do right by them. 
Every few months, he'd visit his son and stay with them for a few days at a time, offering whatever money he could spare in gifts. However, all that came to an end when one day Arthur arrived at their home and saw two crosses outside, immediately knowing that his family was dead. Later learning that they'd been shot and killed by thieves all for $10. This traumatised Arthur and hardened him to the ways of the world, making him believe that you can't live a bad life and expect good things to happen to you. He would later remember his son Isaac fondly as a good kid. Arthur never truly found a means to cope with this grief, instead opting to push it to the back of his mind and chalk it down to karma. In 1894, a prostitute named Abigail Roberts was introduced to the Vandalin gang, at some point falling in love with John Marston and becoming pregnant with their son Jack. Arthur fell into the role of being Jack's uncle. John on the other hand couldn't accept the responsibility of being Jack's father, leading him to leave the gang. Arthur was cut deep by the feeling of his brother's betrayal, and when John returned around a year later, the majority of the gang welcomed him back with open arms, however Arthur couldn't. This created a rift between the two that steadily began to grow as the years passed on. While everybody else forgave John for leaving the gang, Arthur opted to cling to his grudge for years, however he wouldn't let it obstruct his obligation to the gang, and as the events of Red Dead Redemption 2 showed us, he still viewed John as his brother or at the very least, came to forgive him eventually. After 20 years with the Vandalin gang, Arthur had amassed the reputation as Dutch's main enforcer, an unbeaten brawler and unmatched gunslinger, loyal to a fault to his surrogate father figure. He cared about his allies, though he didn't care to show it, and portrayed himself as a brainless outlaw, almost as a form of humility, deflecting at times to avoid taking credit for his actions. Deep down, Arthur Morgan, despite his upbringing and despite his situation, was a good man. And all of that would increasingly become closer to the surface over the course of the events of Red Dead Redemption 2, bringing us nicely to the end of the origin story of Arthur Morgan. Thank you all for watching this video, of course, I really hope that you've enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be super fantastic. And please remember, if you haven't already and like history, to go ahead and subscribe to Decades, my brand new history channel that I'm running with a few friends of mine. And so far, it's been a total blast, so definitely check it out. We've got tons of history content ready to go. And of course, more in the works all the time. Anyway, with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point, so until next time, please do take care and goodbye.